Well, look, there's Leo Shapiro, Debbie Zimmerman, David Hausman, Steve Ledoux. How are you, Ledoux? <laughs> if it rhymes, it's Dharma. That's what I always say. You won't hear that from every Dharma teacher. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. This is Mel, your technical host, and you should be seeing the information about our residential six-day in-person <laughs> retreat at the Saras Retreat Center in Malibu on March 17th to 22nd, and we hope to see you there. Register. Registration is open and waiting for you. Also, we have a master class coming up. Of Amasurya's master classes and Mudita, rejoicing in the sacred joy of naturalness and ordinary ordinariness. That's a mouthful. I think that's next Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, this coming Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And with that, Amasurya, we're ready for you. Okay, thanks, Mel, Menla, everybody, everybody. Nice to see you. Yes, we're back at it with our residential retreat programs a few times a year. Do join us at the beautiful Sarah <clears throat> Franciscan Retreat Center overlooking the ocean at Malibu. So wonderful. We've been there, I don't know how many, maybe a dozen times over the years for retreats. You'll love it. What a view. It's the best place there is for sky gazing and you know, before, after the retreat, ocean, swimming, and sun, worship. Everybody knows that I love water and beaches. So today's an auspicious day. Our Ningmapa Tibetan calendar is the, I believe, 28th anniversary of the passing of the great Tukurgen Rinpoche. The 16th come up is Dzogchen Master, one of my greatest Dzogchen Masters in Nepal. Father of Chukinima Rinpoche, and his brothers Sokni Rinpoche, and well known lately, Minjo Tuku Rinpoche, wonderful lamas. Also, it's the last week of the year, according to Tibetan calendar. As some of you would know, it's Chinese New Year this coming weekend, so it's also Tibetan New Year. And there'll be dragon dancing here in Chinatown and Boston and other places where Chinese communities live and gather. So fun. In fact, Friday night, I was at the Concord Academy, which is a private school here with Reverend Kim Harvey Crawford and her wife, Kim, who's a math professor there. And um, after dinner... There was a performance by the teenage martial artists, sword dancers, spear dancers, fan dancers, acrobats, and funny people, teen of the Chinese Cultural Center in Boston, and that was so great. And I'm telling you, if there's any hope for the world, it's in these young people's faces and eyes, so keep an eye on that. Don't give in to the bad news on the media. You know, the old journalistic slogan, if it bleeds, it reads, means they read it. The young people, so beautiful. Every generation has to face something, and I guess we did too. And whatever you think about the current state, I think the young people are up to it. As long as we're with them and back them, as well as getting out of their way. So let's have a moment of silence for all those suffering at the hands of violence and aggression in war-torn places like Gaza, Ukraine, and elsewhere, as well as pandemics, starvation, oppression, injustice, and so on. Even violence at home and abroad, and I hate to say that, at home, you know what I mean? Have a moment of silence, including all in our prayers and practices today. In our monastery, in Darjeeling, in Nepal, and in our retreat center, three-year retreat center, we spent this whole week doing 
wrathful protector guardian practices, Mahakala and Vajrakalaya. So this is a good time to tune into that, to clear out the obstacles and obstacle makers and bad karma from the past year and chant Vajrasattva's purification mantra and invoke the blessings and inspiration of all those who have gone before, all our benefactors and parents and gurus and lineage masters and forebears who struggled to bring us to where we are in outer and inner ways. So much gratitude and appreciation to them and embracing all in our hearts, wings, the wings of prayer, aspiration and love. Quasayo Namo Butsu Yo Butsu and Yo Butsu and Buposo and Yo Rakagaju Chon and Quanze on Bone and Quanze on and then Jushiki and then Fudishi. Homage to Quanze on Bosatsu, Quan on Bodhisattva. Guan Yin in China, Chen Reizi in Tibet, Avalokiteshvara in Sanskrit, the Buddha of unconditional love and compassion and mercy and forgiveness, the Mahabodhisattva of Karuna, one of the four divine harditudes, the Brahma Viharas, the boundless virtues, Karuna, compassion. May all beings everywhere with whom we are inseparably interconnected be awakened, liberated, healed, fulfilled, safe, and free. And may we all together complete the spiritual journey. Yay! Go Avalokita! Hey, what is this, partisanship, Nathan? Don't you have this bigger-than-life size statue there in the locker room? at the Chiefs Stadium in Kansas City. I think I saw it there. Or maybe it's in the Nelson Atkins Art Museum in Kansas City. That's it. Not the Chiefs locker room. Anyway, it's all a game and we're enjoying it. Notice that in this rendering from many hundreds of years ago, I used to remember these details, 1400 years ago, 1200 years ago, 900 years ago. It was carved out of wood in China by some kind of Buddhist artists, probably monks and acolytes, maybe nuns, nobody knows. These things don't come with a providence. Uh, they come with a providence, but not with like the name of an artist on there. It's Buddhist art, sacred art. Notice it's female-ish, although there's no gender in the ultimate nature. Kuan Yin, the most popular goddess in, goddess in Far East Asia. Have I mentioned called Chen Reizi in Tibet, Avalokiteshvara in Indian Sanskrit. Avalokiteshvara, she who looks over or watches over the world, literally. 
there's no gender in the ultimate, but the female archetype of, there we call them the softer virtues like loving kindness, wishing others well, benevolence and friendliness, metta, maitri, compassion, karuna, feeling with others, feeling what others feel and resonating together, maybe even move to help, at least to move together. Compassion based on empathy. Joy, mudita, sacred joy, kvelling, rejoicing in the success of others, good sportsmanship, kvelling, mudita, the orphaned Brahma Vihara that almost nobody teaches about in Western Buddhism. And fourth, equanimity, which makes them more meaningful, equal to all. If one only loves one family, what's really special and meaningful about that? In the bigger picture, of course, it's very important and meaningful to the individuals. But big love, unconditional love, divine love, impartial or equal to all, Upeksha, the fourth Brahma Vihara, the fourth boundless cardinal virtue of Buddhism, the fourth heartitude, as I like to call it, attitude of heart. So this is Kuan Yin. It's over there in Kansas City. If you ever get there, is it in the museum or? I know. There's one that looks just like it. I wouldn't call it imitation. It's just probably from the same era, maybe a little smaller or not so old, maybe only 800 years old in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, right here in the gigantic Buddha gallery that has bigger than life Buddha statues that were brought from Japan in its own temple setting. The MFA in Boston, classy, check it out. Anyway, this is probably my favorite picture of Avalokiteshvara, although we always, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism use the classic four-armed Chinrezi picture with a thousand-armed because Avalokita has so much activity, liberating compassion and action. Food activity like Thousand Armed. I love her. Wonderful archetype. My root Lama Kala Rinpoche was always had the mantra of Avalokiteshvara, Omani Padme Hung on his lips, even when he was 80, and Mala in his old shaking from tuberculosis and old age hand, the cave yogi. Once I was driving home around New England, it must have been in 1970, uh, July 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 1977. Whoa. I didn't realize that. I know you didn't realize I was that old. Meditation makes you look young. I mean, look at Sharon Salzberg's face, still not a wrinkle, as my mother pointed out. July 4th, 1976, we were invited, Chogim Trump Rupche called uh, the house I put, gotten for Rinpoche, Colum Che in Woodstock, Vermont, uh, New York, before we started Karmatriana Dharma Chakra Monastery there, KTD for the Karmapa, and invited Colum Rupche to come and visit him, Trungpa, in his one year retreat in Western Mass in Charlemont, and somebody in a Playwrights uh, form house, country house. So we went and, you know, so I was driving him around for a few days and we had a wonderful time, of course. And uh, we were even in Boston, um, staying here at Mirabai and Krishna Bush's house in Cambridge. And I must have made some kind of mistake or screw up about something or other, you know, not crucial. No, no car accidents or running out of gas, but, you know, something about organizing or messaging. You know, in those days, we had to stop at pay phones to message. If you remember what those are, you know, if you could find one where you, you didn't have to wait for Superman to change his cape inside. Anyway, we stop at pay phones. I must have screwed up some little arrangements, and I apologize to Kala Rinpoche, who is the embodiment of great compassion, patience, loving kindness. He's so lovely and wonderful with his heart-shaped, wizened old face. Or maybe that was his face-shaped heart. I don't know. He was so lovely. 
and I apologized to him. And he said, in Tibetan, of course, nothing is difficult for me. It wasn't like an American, don't worry, be Api Man or Alfred E. Newman. It was really beautiful. It was like they were a grandfather to child. Nothing is difficult for me. He just took it in stride. Like, it was really, it's, I've never forgotten that. What a teaching. Don't beat yourself up for it. No perfectionism needed. And he was about 80 years old and traveling the world, you know, which ain't that easy for the ordinary uh, human being. So there's so much love and compassion in this Karuna tradition of loving kindness, of the heartitudes, the boundless, the Brahma Viharas, it's not a bad word to know in Buddhism, so it doesn't have to get so weak in translation. The four great virtues, cardinal virtues of the <clears throat> original Buddhism, loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, or rejoicing in the virtues of others. Kveling is probably the best translation, if you know Yiddish words, if you're a New Yorker, if you know New York English. It's the opposite of schadenfreude, if you don't know what Kveling. It's the opposite of schadenfreude. I'll just leave that in that thought. And fourth, equal to all, or equanimity. Not just stay centered and calm, but impartial, objective, equal to all. Recognizing that what others want and need, we want and need too, and our loved ones want and need, not just us. So there's a whole section of Mahayana Buddhism and Vajrayana Buddhism about this ray. It's like Jesus' ray, you know, this vibration of great compassion. Some People have speculated that Jesus and Avalokiteshvara are in the same ray or dimension, or, you know, let's not take this too literally, the same kind of archetype of loving kindness, compassion and action, empathy, love really, warmth, friendliness, is also in the word Maitri, metta, openness, friendliness, not gregariousness, not fake friendliness. Uh, thank you for the phone number, operator. I love you. Have a good day. I love you. Bye. That might be a little treacly or too much, but open, friendly, welcoming the world and everyone in it, including the animals and being seen and unseen. The Loving Kindness Sutra, the Metta Sutra, of course, is there to use and study. It's only one page. It's easy. That's where the phrase, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful, may all beings be liberated, comes from, that we use for our loving kindness cultivation and practice, Metta practice. The Metta Sutta, the Loving Kindness Scripture. Look it up. One page. You might print it out and bind it like a front lid upon thine eyes, as my grandfather would say. Keep it at the forefront of your consciousness, as I might say. Contemplate it and learn it and meditate it and, you know, grok it, make it part of yourself. There's another Yiddish word that New Yorkers know, grok it, dig it, take it in, make it part of yourself and live it. It's very lovely and light, lively and enlivening. Metta bhavana, loving kindness cultivation. Not praying to get it. Of course, praying is also part of spiritual life. But this is Buddhist cultivation practice, metta bhavana, cultivating benevolence, loving kindness, empathy in our heart and mind, body and soul, and relations and even systems our social systems could also benefit by being a little uh, kinder and equitable. Don't you th think? So having started off on this ray, and I don't know, to be, to amuse myself, you know, getting the message from above, 
to say something about loving kindness and the mantra Om Mani Padme Hung being the Dalai Lama's mantra and the Dalai Lama, the Karmapa and the Gyalwang Jokpa being considered and recognized as incarnations of Avalokiteshvara, a Bodhisattva, or the Buddha of love and compassion on earth, at least in the Tibetan tradition. There are scholars like Marcus Borg, like Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, who have written books about Jesus and Buddha, our brothers, that's one title. I guess that's Thich Nhat Hanh, but it might be Marcus Borg. Maybe Marcus Borg picked out a lot of quotes from both of them that are very parallel, kind of the parallel sayings of Jesus and Buddha. For you theists and Jesus lovers, it includes me. I love reading that kind of thing. The Dalai Lama has a book about Jesus from a weekend he taught at, uh, it starts with an A, that famous <clears throat> abbey in England where Dom Alry Graham was the abbot. Ample Fourth, <clears throat> excuse me, Ample Fourth Abbey. The Dalai Lama taught a weekend, it became, the transcript became a book. He taught about the four gospels and Jesus and love and compassion and things. <clears throat> excuse me while I croak. The book is called um, I don't know, it might be called Good Heart. Anyway, easy to find these days, Google, the Dalai Lama, Jesus, Gospels, or whatever you remember, Ample Fourth Abbey, you'll find it. This is a very important theme in life, obviously, not just love songs and country love songs and sad love poems about loss and other things, but really cultivating, realizing, looking into, exploring, reconditioning our selfish, narcissistic conditioning to be more loving, kind, empathic, sharing, and all the other cardinal virtues of the bodhisattvas, panacean virtues, the paramitas, the panacean virtues and transformative practices of the bodhisattvas. It's such an important practice. Also, if you practice this, the eight great deep samadhis, absorptions, I won't use the word trance, but I've been hearing on the radio a lot about these things lately, a new book about Gregory Bateson and Margaret Mead and the early psychedelic research of the 40s and 50s and how Mead studied trance states in Bali and in other places and was fascinated with her whole life and they took uh, mescaline or peyote buttons and things like that to explore these things. The great anthropologists and sociologists, Gregory Bateson and Margaret Mead, who were married for some time. Oh, in fact, my buddy and neighbor, my sports buddy, Aguli, uh, lived with them when he was adopted into this country from Pakistan in the mid 1950s. So it's all connected. And the important thing here is the heart of the matter is being more loving and charitable and connected in this world, don't you think? And it being Sunday, it's a good day to sermonize on that, like from the Metta Sutra, or books like Buddha and Jesus of Brothers with a good heart, or read the Gospels, or read the book, go outside and read the Book of Nature. Every sound is the sound of the Dharma, the sound of the the Dream, the waterfall, the wind, the waves, the trees rustling, the sound of the grass growing, the sound of the birds, the chatter of the children. Yes, even you have to count, I suppose, the sound of traffic, grinding gears, sirens, and other things you might consider unbeautiful. It's all the self resound of the Dharmata, of the reality. The true nature. Why discriminate? You know, it has its place in the mandala of great connecting and belonging. So I love this Avalokiteshvara mm, department category, the Karuna Sutras, it's called, all the sutras and teachings and commentaries and practices about 
love and great compassion, Avalokiteshvara, Kuan Yin, Kanon Bodhisattva, Kuan Zion in Japan and Korea, all these places. So when we began, I chanted one of the prayers to Kuan Zion Bosatsu, how they call it, at our Zen Master's Monastery in South Korea, San Kwang Sa, Kuan Zion Bosatsu. That was a Korean chant that I learned when I was there. Yes, it seems far away, but you know people who studied there too, who were there, like Stephen Batch and Marty Batchelor were there in the 70s. That's where they met. They just visited there for the 40th or 50th year reunion. And my old friend Suil, who lived in Asia for so long, and is Scottish, and she's going to help teach the retreat in Malibu this spring. It's one of the first Ochen retreats she's taught. She was in India, Japan. She was a Zen monk, not in Korea, and those Korean and Japanese for many years. So I love these teachings of the good heart. You know, maybe it's said that we teach what we need to learn. So I'll cop to that. But we all, I think, could learn some of that, although I do know some of the best hearted people in the world, and they are really that already on that ray like Jesus, like Mary, like Buddha, Tara, and so on. But I mean, human people I was thinking about who are on that ray, I'm not going to mention their names, just save them embarrassment from I don't know, being holier than us. <laughs> They're not holier than now people, but I'm just poking here in fun, get a smile out of some of them. Some of them aren't even here. On this call, the Zoom. But they're also Zoomer boomers, and you can catch them and meet them and hear from them if you wish, besides in person, doing the same Bodhisattva work. So, Om Mani Padme Hung is the heart mantra of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva of Kuan Yin. The mantra of the Dalai Lama and the other incarnations of Avalokiteshvara, like the Dalai Lama, the Karmapa, the Gyalwang Drupa, and I think there's a few others, I can't remember, those are my, quote, friends, or spiritual friends, that's what I should call them, my Kaliyadamicha, my spiritual friends or elders, as the Buddha called himself, not a guru, a spiritual friend, Kaliyadamicha, a helpful elder. Kala Rinpoche, have I mentioned this? Always had his mala in his left hand and was the mantra on his lips. So many lamas I know, if you ask them what's their main practice, and you know Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism, there's a lot of practices they could be doing, they are doing, and we hear about, and we even feel like interested in or learn or practice ourselves, if we're into that. He always had the mantra on his lips. And many lamas, when you would ask them, what's your main practice, they would say, Om Mani Padme Hum, or just the Mani, meaning the Mani mantra. So that's so important, cultivating compassion. As you know, if you read traditional Buddhist books translated to English, sort of oldish books, not the most modern books like Buddhist politics and I don't know, Buddhist ecology, but the Buddhist classics in English he was always called the compassionate Buddha. In India, they call him Lord Buddha, Bhagavan Buddha, in Sanskrit, in Hindi. But in the books, in English, all the scholars from 100, 150 years ago when Buddhism started getting translated into us, all those books call him the compassionate Buddha. Not the wise Buddha, not the meditator Buddha. Look it up, the compassionate Buddha, with a capital C. That was like his main designator or epithet. Does not tell us what's important just like if you think of jesus and everybody has different you know thoughts relations reactions to that idea growing up in our society dare i call it a judeo-christian society i I don't know if it still is exactly but we all have some thoughts or associations with that i just want to say in general if we think of jesus and jesus's message i think we have to think of love before anything else but that's just me. But I think that is the ray that 
Jesus and Buddha ride on or emanate from or and emanate out. And that's so beautiful. And not just romantic love, there's so many different kinds of love, but divine, unconditional, all accepting, healing love, what Jesus called the waters of life. Not ordinary water that alleviates thirst, but the waters of life that bring everlasting life, the water of spirit, the water of love. So having started on that, oh yes, I'm getting a message. Wait a minute, these, these are my antenna in case you can't tell, I'm tuning in. Yes, so in Tibetan Buddhism, we often count malas, you know, this is a bead rosary, but it's also an abacus. It has these little counters on them and the counters slide like an abacus. I'm sure you are very familiar with that in the age of handheld computers, the abacus. So we count 100,000 mantras and 100,000 bows and things like that. Maybe they didn't have clocks a thousand years ago and they, had, and they counted their prayers or, or steps. You know, people have been counting their steps for a long time and their bows and their prayers, just like in Western religions. People count their Hail Marys and Ave Marias sometimes. So we count 100 or literally 108,000 or 111,000. When we do a practice just to say, you know, just practice it for a long time, like all year or half a year or however long that takes. Or we do a thousand in a meditation session. Maybe they didn't have clocks. So you count that way. So Kala Rinpoche was known to have chanted the Mani Mantra three and a half tung. So obviously he must have said this or his assistant said this. It was common knowledge among the cognoscenti at least. What's a tung? A tung, tung means a thousand. I got to say this in Tibetan so it's easier to say. A boom is 100,000. That's what we do, like in the preliminary practices of Vajrayana. It takes a while. So instead of counting hours or counting days or counting years, you count mantras. And then when you finish your 100,000, odd 100,000 number, um, 111,000, whatever your teacher's tradition says, then like a Vajrasattva's purification mantra or your 700,000 of Omani Pebihun compassion mantra, Maybe you uh, are done, complete, and you start another practice. Maybe you do it again. That also happens. Um, so that's a boom, 100,000. So keep that in mind. So a tung means a 1,000. A tung is a 1,000, hundred thousands. So I used to try to figure it out, but I'm really not good with numbers. In my mind, that makes 100 million but maybe it's only 10 million, but I think it's 100 million. I'm not even trying to figure it out. My mind's too slow at this time. Also, I'm in jet lag. Um, a thousand, a tongue of booms of 100,000. Mel, you're a genius of, of a kind. That must make 100 million, right? Anyway, it's a hell of a lot of mantras. Colin Che had said and counted, I guess, three and a half times that. Three and a half hundred million, 350 billion times that mantra. Of course, he did other prayers, practices, but he lived, and mantras, but he lived in a cave for 22 years. He was a practitioner his whole life. So uh, he had his, uh, I don't know, 100,000 hours in, not just 10,000 to be a master of compassion, not of rote recitation. That's the important thing. Motivation, intention, focus, attitude, and transformation, not just parrot recitation. So 350 million mantras, according to the latest count here, unreliable as these polls may be. Anyway, even with a little wiggle room, he held it his whole life and a hell of a lot, besides the many other practices he did and taught and transmitted and was master of. So compassion, in a way, you could say was the heart of our Dharma. 
And Buddha Dharma, the compassion of Buddha. So let's chant a little. Get off on the right foot here. Not the left. Get off on the right. Joke. No binary partisanship here. We're not against Kansas City in the Super Bowl. Oh, what am I thinking about? No, we're not just for the right as opposed to the left. But let's get off on the right foot as the saying goes and start chanting compassionate Shinrazi Avalokita's mantra, Kuan Yin's mantra. I think Kuan Yin's a very nice, gentle, compassion image for us today. If you have an image of Kuan Yin, the Chinese form, the two armed form. It's good to have around and think about. You can find them anywhere online or in shops and books. Easy to copy or acquire. Harder to grok and realize, but not impossible. That's the direction we're going here. Great compassion and love for one and all equally. And a better world and more just and equitable world for all equally. Regardless of how many arms they have, or what religion they are, or gender, or nationality, or political beliefs. All beings endowed with the luminous Buddha nature, the good heart, basic sanity, Buddha nature. The seed or the, the nature of Buddha itself. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. You should never drink while you're chanting in the middle of your prayers and mantras. Om, that's what they tell me. Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Oh Mani Padme Hung. Oh Mani Padme Hung. Oh Mani Padme Hung. Oh Mani Padme Hung. Oh Mami Pray Me Om. Oh Mani Padme. Oh Mani Padme Hung. Oh Mani Padme Oh Mani Padme Oh Mani Oh Mani Padme Oh Mani Padme Oh look, there's a statue of Chenrezy on the altar next to Kala Rinpoche. Oh, man, for Ram Chenrezig in Tibetan form, representing the four Brahma Viharas in action. Oh, man, Padme Hong. Oh, man, Padme Hong. Oh, man, Padme Oh, May all beings be happy, content, fulfilled, safe, and free. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh Mani Padme. Oh, Mani. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme Oh, Mani Padme Oh, Mani Padme Oh, Mani Padme If you chant it enough, this is what you'll look like. This is the Mani Man in my book, of Tibetan teaching tales, the Snow Lion's Turquoise Bane from 1992. Oh, that's the Mani Man. 
my friend Charles Hastings in our three year tree drew it. And there it says, Omani Padme Hun carved on a Mani stone. That's something you see in Tibet. Mani stones. Mantras carved on rocks along the mountain passes. Oh, ma. And he's holding a prayer wheel, turning that with prayers inside. It's a Himalayan custom. Oh, ma. Padme. Oh, mommy, pray me home. Oh, mommy, pad me home. Oh, mommy, pad me home. Oh, mommy, pad me home. If you get into these things, you'll see that Shen Reizi sits on a lotus and has a lotus in his heart, and on his head is the red Buddha of infinite light, Amitabha, in the Western Pure Land, Dewa Chen, where they live beyond the sunrise. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Ma. This is the hero of the Lotus Sutra. Om Padme. Amitabha. Infinite light, infinite life. Buddha. Om Mani Padme. Oh, You may wonder where these Buddhas live, or we may not, or if anybody really has ever seen them. I saw that Buddha sitting in the seat of the 16th Karmapa when he gave a few of us the Amitabha empowerment and consciousness transfers, Pawa Wang, in Carmel, New York, in a t- big tent in um, 1977. Literally. I can still see him now, infinite light, not karmapa sitting there, radiating and reabsorbing in and out of me, like who's who here, like mirrors. It's unbelievable. It was the real empowerment. You don't always get that when you're sitting there getting an empowerment. That's more like a blessing or teaching, but I think I got the real empowerment that day by the Buddha's grace and karmapa's CDs. Oh, Mani Padme Home. Oh, Mani Padme Home. Another thing you should never do is talk about your spiritual experiences. It dissipates them, like telling people your dreams if they're not your closest confidant or your dream journal. Oh, Mani Padme but I've been quiet about that till now, and it's good for people to know that we have those experiences too these days, not just in ancient times. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme Hung. Oh, Mani Padme Hung. Oh, Mani Padme Hung. Oh, Mani. Oh, Mani. Love, compassion flowing freely. Cultivating, generating, aspiring to be bodhisattvas and great bodhisattvas and Buddhas for the benefit of boundless benefit of one and all.
especially by the Mahayana, the great vehicle of universal deliverance. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. The Bodhisattvas are like the engines, not the engines, the captain of the great vehicle. Om Mani Padme Hum. Bodhicitta. Altruistic aspiration for enlightenment, bodhicitta, is the heart, is the engine, the motor of the great vehicle. Bigger than any aircraft, camera, or Titanic, including all. Om Mani Padme Hung Om Mani Padme Pure motivation, aspiration, and altruistic intention is the fuel of the engine of the great vehicle. Oh, ma, the fuel for bodhicitta that drives the great ship of deliverance across the ocean of suffering to the other shore. Nirvana, yay! The goal of all schools of Buddhism. Oh, ma, ne, pa, me, ho, ho. Omani Padme Hum. Omani Padme Hum. Omani Padme. And we're all like Sangha, like pods of dolphins or fish crossing the ocean of samsara together. Even after we die, oh, like a pod with those we have karmic connections with and altruistic aspirations, bodhisattva vows even, like a pod heading home, heading to the light, being there while getting there, every step or every swim of the way. <laughs> oh, Mani Padme Ho. Every stroke of the way, yes. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. May you be at peace, in harmony, non aggressive. Oh, Mani Padme. Mani Padme. Love for all beings who are just like us and our loved ones who want and need the same as we do. And are pursuing it through different ends, that's different means, that's all. Oh, Mani Padme, oh, oh, Mani Padme. Even our enemies and adversaries, if you really look deep, they want the need and wish for their families and their lands and loved ones, same as we do. But just pursuing it through different means, going through different belief systems and conditioning, karma, just like we do. Oh, Mani Padme, oh, Mani Padme. Like the Native Americans say, if you want to know where a person's coming from, walk a mile in their moccasins. Um, I see it through their eyes. Mani Padme. Oh, 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 Mani Padme. Oh. This is all part of the attitude transformation, mind training, low jung practice. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, oh. Radiating love and benevolence, kindness to one and all equally, our own family, bigger family. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, no, Mani Padme. Oh, Mani Padme. Ah, love, um, 
unconditional, divine, flowing freely, breathing it out, breathing it in, radiating and reabsorbing, more or less simultaneously, pulsing, like subtle energy, prana, not just sequentially, like breath. Oh, mani padme hum. Love, loving kindness to one and all. Oh, mani padme hum. Oh, padme hum. Oh, mani padme Oh, mommy, pray me home. Oh, mommy, Padme. Oh, mommy, Padme. May all beings be healed and whole again, restored. Oh, mommy, Padme. Oh, oh, oh mommy, Padme. Loving kindness, one of the greatest aids, it augments the eight jnanas, the eight super samadhis that I mentioned before. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho. The eight jnanas. Oh, mani padme ho. The jhanas, the absorptions. Om Mani Padme Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme May we be healed. May the earth itself be healed, rebalanced, restored. Oh, the good old earth, Mother Earth, green earth, green like Mother Tara. Nature, oh, honey, pet me, oh, money, pet me, oh, money, pet me, home. oh, don't be afraid to move, don't be a wooden Buddha or a stone Buddha, be a living Buddha, dancing Buddha, laughing Buddha, loving Buddha, breathing Buddha, oh, yeah, nah. yes, even thinking Buddha, why not, joking Buddha, rooting Buddha. Oh, Mani Padme. Oh, lazy Buddha. Yes, I mean you. You know who you are. The Padme. Oh, oh Mani Padme. A little Buddha, big Buddha who's counting or weighing. Oh, Mani Padme. Don't worry, be api, woman, oh, man, hey, pet, others, hey, oh, oh, man, hey, pet, hey. How sweet it is in the spirit together. Oh, man, hey, pet, hey, oh, 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 oh. The jewel is in the lotus, the Buddha is within. The shadows are nothing but light. Check it out, friends. Maho. Oh, Mani Padme Hore. 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 So what up, so hoi, Lama Chan Raisi. So what, excuse me, but so what up, so hoi, Chan Raisi. So what up, so hoi, Pak Shou Chan Raisi. So what up, so hoi, Jam Gong Chan Raisi. Praying to you, O Lord of love, and may tree come kindness. Turn your face towards us this way. Oh, money, pay me home. So, what depths of Lama Chen Rezi? Thank you. Way to go.
106, 107, 108. We're out of time. You asked me to keep track of the numbers. So Thanks, Mel. Mello. Okay. Thank you, Lama. And thank you, everyone who's here. We consider donating. I've sent you a few links in the chat. And may we all have a wonderful week. Love and blessings. Best wishes to one and all. And happy Losar, Tibetan New Year, next weekend, Chinese New Year. And really every day is a, a new year. One day has so many lifetimes in it, so many mind moments every moment. Check it out. <laughs>